question belongs to me. And the answer belongs to Mike Kliss. They built all this for you? This they is did. spectacular. Wow. This is gorgeous. This is where you operate every single day. Unbelievable. Okay, totally yes. self-serving question. Yes. I'm a Syracuse guy, love Syracuse football and basketball. Riley Dixon, the Broncos' yeah. new punter, got a fat new deal today. Yep. He seems like a different kind of dude. He plays with some real intensity. This is him yeah. running for a first down against LSU. Yeah. Now, look at the punch. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a punch. He was oh. just swinging an arm oh, okay. a little bit. He must have got away with it because what he didn't is get the deal dip. with this guy? <laughs> I tell you, I did hear that he was a cult hero there in Syracuse. That MVP, there, yeah. That there wasn't too much to cheer about <laughs> for the Orangemen in the last couple of years, but the fake punt was a big play uh, up there in Syracuse, and he had four tackles. I th he was two for two passing in his career at Syracuse. He had in the last two years three rushes for over 70 yards. So yeah, he's quite an athlete. I think punters and kickers in general are wannabe football players. They're not really considered football players. Even by the other football players? No. They don't practice with the teams. They practice separately. You have offense versus defense, and they tell the punters and the, and the kickers to go over the other field and hang out. And that's what they do. Sometimes Jason Elam used to go inside and watch TV during practice the whole time. So they're isolated, and so that makes them a little bit different. And uh, But uh, a lot of them are athletes. They try to convince the coaches that they're athletes. They just never get the chance. So when I see Dixon and I see the way that he talks to the media and the, the fire with which he plays, it reminds me of a lot of the other guys that the Broncos have had over the last few years, punting and kicking. Uh, Britton Colquitt and Connor Barth and Brandon McManus. They're funny guys. They're outgoing they guys. They're really cerebral guys. What is it about the punters and kickers that develops that kind of attitude? First of all, they do get a lot of downtime. They can read more than the typical football <laughs> player. That might be one reason. And, uh, you know, also because I think they don't get paid uh, a whole lot of money. You know, like uh, you said, a fat contract. He got an eighty thousand dollars signing bonus. I'd take an eighty thousand dollars signing bonus. I, we we all would, but that's a little closer to us than maybe the five million dollars signing bonus that Paxton Lynch is sure. going to get. It's hard for us to identify. So he, they identify, I think, with uh, more the normal people out here. They have the typical problems. They have they they wind up married. They have kids. They have to save their money. They have to get jobs outside of football they don't get that much long-term security so they are regular guys and uh, they also have more time to think more time to interact it's not as serious the game is not serious to them Monday through Saturday it is serious on Sunday and I think that's another thing that makes them quirky uh, they're asked to perform so little but it's high pressure when they do mm -hmm. they have to make that kick or the game is lost they have to deliver that punt or they got their team in bad field position and there's 80,000 people watching and all those people at home. It's, uh, it's, it's high pressure. Uh, it, they just don't have to do it as often. A different breed. Inside the head of Riley Dixon and the punters and kickers of the Denver Broncos. Inside Mike Kliss's head, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Mike.